Ciao, come stai? All today we're going to look at this pen. This pen was lent to me by Applebaum. Thank you. Don't forget you can get a 10% discount there and on a pen like this they can make a difference. Okay, let's talk a little bit about this pen before we get into the parts, all right? This is the Visconti Torpedo. It's based on the Italian design trend of Bolidismo, all right, which is a bit of a throwback to the the futurism of the 1930s uh, and the torpedo actually alludes to a very specific model of car so this pen definitely has the need for speed. Um, so barrel carbon fiber has a nice cutout right there so you can see the ink level which is kind of neat because the pen is a power filler so it's nice you cannot just unscrew the section to see how much ink is in your converter so I think that design feature, that, that makes sense. Power filler, interesting, carbon fiber, barrel, um, and of course, uh, 1600 euros and a steel nib. Right, makes complete sense. Uh, I'll, I'll, I'll come back to that in just a second. Here's what I'm going to do. Now that you have a little bit of a background on the pen, I'm going to show you the parts of the pen. I'll do a writing sample and I'll tell you what I like about it and what I don't like about it. Okay, so here we go with the Bisconti Torpedo. Um, that's actually not what it's called. The Visconti Torpedo box. Visconti just loves these big boxes, right? Um, so this comes off, kind of an interesting window. You get there, uh, pen sleeve, international warranty. Of course the pen can sort of fit in there in the sleeve and then... Oh, it's so heavy. All of this stuff is so heavy. And then you can see the pan on the inside. Sorry for the noise. <clears throat> so I'm just putting that out of the way. You have an identity card for your specific pen because it is a limited edition. So you have the number and that's kind of it. Um, yes, just checking. The bottom of that comes out but there's nothing under there. Just putting this out of the way. Now let's look at the parts of the pen. So, top of the pen this finial, nice grooves, looks kind of cool. The famous Visconti clip, Ponte Vecchio. Very smooth and springy, this one. We have grooves here. Right there, on the back of the cap, there's a number. This is uh, number 90 of 388 pens. Carbon fiber, carbon fiber. We have that nice ink window that I have shown you before. Sorry, I'm trying to not blind you with the, the reflections, but if I don't put up these lights, the, the lighting isn't good enough. So you can look at the uh, level of ink in there right now, Pelican Royal Blue. I'm just trying to make it all move to the bottom so you can see. Filling system is a power filler, so there's this end knob here. You unscrew that, pull it out, put this in a bottle of ink, of course uncapped, and push this all the way back in as a plunger, draws a vacuum and sucks up ink. The advantage of that is also that you uh, you have this secondary ink chamber there which you can empty out back into the main reservoir so that when you fly uh, no ink will come out of your pen. Let me just put ink back in there. There we go, so I can write with it. Section clear ink window, section, big threads, but they're not particularly sharp, they're fairly wide threads. Section tapers down, flares out a little bit, and then you have this skeleton nib. Now, I'm, I, I admit I'm a little confused. Uh, everywhere I see this pen advertised, I see it advertised as having a palladium nib, just one of the regular palladium nibs. Um, just, I happen to have one of my pens here. Sorry. This type of standard, normal-looking palladium nib. But then this pen has a skeleton nib, um, which looks like it's steel. It could be Visconti's Chromium 18, but that's basically a steel nib. I don't know what's going on here. I don't know if Visconti decided to just put on random nibs, or if they decided at some point that they were not going to do palladium, but they were going to do these nibs. Um, or if this particular one is a weird anomaly, I, I simply don't know what happened here. So I'm, I'm sorry, I, I can't tell you what the deal with the nibs is. In hand, this is a larger pen. Um, here we have a 
Twisby Diamond 580 that I think many people will recognize as a pen. Um, the torpedo is large, and not just is it large, it's heavy. This is a very, very solid pen. And as I said, uh, definitely larger in hand. Two, posting, not really possible because of the overlay and all that. It doesn't really seem to want to do that. But there you have it, big pen. Now, shall we see how this beauty writes? Let me zoom out a little bit. Cap is in the way, isn't it? Okay. Visconti. Torpedo. The nib is, I'm just gonna call it skeleton medium. And the ink is just Pelican Royal Blue. There's nothing fancy here. Um, it's one of those slightly upturned nibs that, that Visconti does. It's it writes nicely. Fast writing. And as you can see, it keeps up pretty well with ink demand, which is rather nice. Uh, it's not the world's smoothest nib. I have definitely used smoother. There's quite a lot of feedback on this. Wetness is, seems to be okay. Um, very carefully trying to squeeze out a little bit of line variation. Always very, very careful. This is not a flex nib, but you can carefully squeeze out a little bit. Um, reverse writing is possible. Quite scratchy, but it is possible. It seems to keep going for a bit. And then you definitely take this from a good medium to, I would say, a fine or maybe even extra fine. So, quite interesting. Hope this was useful so far. Let's talk about what I like about it and what I not like about it. Right. What do I like, what do I not like about the Visconti Torpedo? I don't know why it's so much fun to say that. Sorry, sorry, the Visconti Torpedo. What do I like about it, what do I not like about it? Well, it's a larger pen and I like larger pens. So for me, it's rather a nice size. Um, I will say it's very heavy, but I'll come back to that. I also think it's always very cool when you have a Visconti power filler that they make it somewhat transparent. It's too cool a filling system to not see. I know you just see a little bar, but trust me, when you ink this up and you see the ink gushing in there, that's very cool. So I, I really enjoy that. The nib writes pretty well. I cannot say I find this a stellar nib. It's not the greatest nib I have ever seen, but it writes well. So all of those things I like. But then there's some things I don't like so much. First question, as I said during, I think, the writing sample, what happened? Why does everybody say this pen comes with a palladium nib and then it has this, this what looks to be like a steel skeleton nib? I mean, it looks cool. And the fun thing is, you, you may not really be able to see, but you can even look through that, that skeleton part. You can see the, the uh, section, and if you hold that against the light, you can actually see, sorry, the, the feed. You can see the combs of the feet. I mean, it looks it looks nice, but I don't get it. What, what went on here? My biggest issue is this pen costs 1,600 euros. So that's including 21% VAT, but still, this is a very expensive pen. Yes, it's a limited edition, but this is expensive, right? Let, let, we all agree, this is an expensive pen. What about this nib? Because at that price, I would kind of expect gold, or at the very least, palladium. Now, this is a snobby hobby, and people always say that it has to be gold. It doesn't have to be gold. I have seen some steel nibs outperform some gold nibs. Faber-Castell Emotion, absolutely superb steel nibs. And in my lifetime, I've used a lot of fountain pens with steel nibs. I have never seen a fountain pen nib made of steel corrode. I know that at some point that may happen, but I have never ever experienced it, even with the cheapest crappiest steel nibs I have ever used. 
Dip nibs, that's a different story, but fountain pen nibs, I haven't seen it. So must it be gold? I don't think you necessarily have to say that, but what I will say is, at this price, I would expect something that is not steel, to be honest. And that is not snobby hobby, that's just because I think that is fair. Okay, so enough uh, bitching about that. This pen is heavy, there's no doubt about it. This is a heavy, monstrous pen, so not everyone will appreciate that. Those of us with smaller hands uh, may struggle. It's big, it's girthy, and it's definitely heavy. I like the ink window, I like the clear barrel, but there's something I don't like so much, and that's the design feature too. Uncapping. One, two, three, four. That's a lot. I'm now going to uncap this pen as quickly as I can because I have to quickly write something down, okay? This is as fast as I can uncap it. That's too long. In my mind, that is too long. Um, may not be an issue to everyone, but to me it is. And I know that for some of you, that people always want to know how many twists, well, four full twists. And on a big pen, you feel it. It takes quite a bit of time. So, there you have that. I think the biggest issue with the pen is that it is very expensive. 1600 euros, that's just very expensive. And at that point you want something that is perfect. And I just don't know if it is. I mean, here's another thing. Have a very good look at this Visconti imprint. Do you see that at the O here? It's a bit reflective, but the blackness seems to have kind of... It's almost like it's, it's rubbed down a little bit. It, it, it's these small kinds of details. Um, I don't know. I don't know. I, I, I don't necessarily see the 1600 bucks in this. And that's just the way it is. So, I hope this was useful. Thank you to Applebaum for lending me the pen. Don't forget, discount code on my webpage to get 10% discount at Applebaum. And so let's do it. I hope this was useful, and I'll gladly see you later. Bye-bye.